Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, January the 31st, 2016. Thank God for the another opportunity to come before the people and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to teach his truth through the Holy Bible. I thank God and I don't take this lightly and neither should you because God wants to speak through his servants and when he does, he wants the glory. He doesn't want his servants getting the glory because his servants didn't send their son to die for his sins. Amen? Amen. When all the glory goes to God, when we do things. So those of us who are true believers in Christ, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Not they will glorify for you and make you rich and all this other kind of junk that's going on out of here where people are perverting the gospel to get more money into their pockets. We're here to preach the gospel to get more souls into the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And it don't cost you a dime to repent of your sins. Not a dime. You understand? The Bible says come freely and come boldly to the throne of grace. But you come freely to drink of the living water and to eat of the bread of life through Jesus. This week we will continue the relationship with God. There's so many ways that we carry out our relationship with God here on earth. And as I said, there are people that think that you just get saved and that's it. There's nothing you can do to fall. That is a lie. The Bible clearly teaches us that many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the Bible warns us that we're to take heed and stand lest we fall. You understand? I believe what the Bible says over these denominational false doctrines that have crept into the church i believe when the bible says those that obey god those that worship him those that humble themselves and pray you understand these are the marks of a true christian today we will continue and we will be dealing with a relationship with god through worship through worship, I just played a song called The Worshipper and Me. Although the artist of the song, there, you know, there are some certain things that I could say. But the lyrics to that song, if there's a true worshiper of God, God hears you. You understand? Mm -hmm. God wants true worship. He doesn't want somebody just saying hallelujah and praise the lord and in going and living their own way he's looking for those who have the worshiper in them that is your spirit connected to the holy spirit you understand the holy spirit is god so therefore as god as a third person in the triune godhead he automatically gives glory to the Father and the Son. The Bible says, when it is he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. It says that he will glorify both the Father and the Son. So that is proof that there is a triune Godhead for those who don't believe in the Trinity. I'm talking about the Holy Trinity, not the counterfeits that are out here like the Roman Catholic Church and others. But I'm talking about the true one triune Godhead whom have made himself known to the world through the Father in heaven, through the Son Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Ghost that lives in the hearts of every believer. God has reached out to us to try to bring us back in right standing with him and he has made all provisions for us to do so so if we do not come in the right fellowship and relationship with god we have ourselves to blame you understand you don't have your mother or your brother or your husband or your wife or your sister or your brother you understand mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. you only have you to blame if you miss heaven because God made it possible through the shedding of the blood of his son and the power of the Holy Ghost and the word of God. We have all the tools we need to be successful 
in the kingdom of God and in our Christian walk. But God doesn't override our will. So today we're going to talk about a relationship with God through worship. Now we know that one of the most quoted verses when you're dealing in worship is John 4, 24. And we'll, we'll touch a few verses in John, but we're going to start off in Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to see an example of what you shouldn't do and an example of what you should do when you want to have a relationship with God. But before I get into that, I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your Holy Spirit help me to preach your holy word. I thank you, God, for the another opportunity to preach. I pray that your spirit will anoint me and be with me as I try to minister the truth of your word. May you empower me to go behind my human capabilities and knowledge and that your spirit may truly deliver a message that will help someone be free if they are willing to receive the truth of your holy word. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter number 15. I've touched on this chapter before, but there's such powerful examples in here as dealing with the subject matter. I'm just going to start in verse 1 where it says, Then came to Jesus certain, I mean, scribes and Pharisees, which were at Jerusalem, saying, Why did our disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curse of father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. He's talking about people who will not help their parents because they say, I got a gift and that gift is going to the Lord, so basically I'm going to take it to the temple mm -hmm. or I'm going to take it to the church and give it to the church when my father and mother have need of it right now. See the disrespect, but yet they're going to say that the disciples had dirty hands so they were defiling themselves because they had dirty hands. Jesus said, you got a more than dirty hands, you got a dirty heart. That's something even more serious than having dirty hands, as we shall see in this verse. But he's talking about what the, like the average person. The average person would not help their family and others in need, but they'll take all their money and give it to the church because they think the more money I give to the church, the more blessed I am with God. And I've touched on that subject before, and we know that that's not true. We know that God has an assignment for us and if we neglect others because we say we have to do this God's not pleased with that especially our own parents you understand the Pharisees did not honor their father and mother but they want to get on somebody else because they was eating with dirty hands now yes there are commandments in the law of Moses that said you should wash your hands this way and that way before eating but Jesus said, look, I got something more important to show you. And so that's what he's doing here. And I've preached on that before. But the focus of this sermon here is dealing with worship. Listen to what he says in verse 7. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, now Esaias is uh, Latin for the prophet Isaiah. You understand? So it's talking about the prophet Isaiah here. But it uses the Latin word Esaias here in the King James Bible. Which is okay, by the way, because once you understand it, then you can read it. And it doesn't bother you that it uses the Latin word Esaias. Okay? Verse 8. This people draweth nigh 
unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Listen to this. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Do you understand what it's saying? God says your worship is in vain. You want to bring something to the church and give it to God? Fine. But if you have neglected your parents in the process of doing so, then you worship me in vain. And that's what he's trying to get you to see. Worship, we know, according to the book of John 4.24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The verse before it says, For such is whom the Father seeketh to worship him. You understand? Worshiping God with your human spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, is what it's talking about. Worshiping him in spirit is when your human spirit gets connected to God by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And in truth, meaning... You're honest. That means if you say you're a Christian, you're a Christian. You're not a Christian by day and a devil by night. It's not talking about you playing both sides of the fence. We already know that Jesus said, I would that you be cold or hot, but if you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, he said, I will spew you out of my mouth. That spew equivalates to throw up. You understand it's nasty. You're nasty to him if you want to try to be on both sides of the fence, which many of us, if not all of us, have done at one time or another. For those who have accepted Christ, for those of us who have never accepted Christ, you need to do so. Because if you check out of here and you're not right with Jesus, they can have a home going service, but you're not going home. Only those that are right with Jesus will go home as I read that obituary that my aunt gave me yesterday. It was a very powerful, powerful account of the life of a lady that passed away a day before she would have reached her 100th birthday. What a milestone. What a milestone. But even more important, what I'm hearing, and I didn't know this lady, but what I'm hearing is that she loved the Lord and that she was a worshiper of God and she did many good deeds for people as a result of her relationship. She's not saved because of the good deeds that she did. She's saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? But as an evidence of her salvation, she did good and had a lot of kind words to say for people. That's called witnessing. That's called your lifestyle being a witness for Jesus. And like I said, I don't know the lady. I don't know if it's true or untrue, but it's a wonderful testimony when somebody can have that to say of you and it be true. And I'm going to believe and assume that it's true. It is. Amen. And so what you don't want to be said about you is that you thugged out and that you've gone to where you deserve and you're going to burn in hell. That's not what you want to hear when you check out of here. But the reality is, while somebody died and went to heaven, somebody else died and went to hell. You understand? There are only two places that you can go. And you have the opportunity to choose which one is going to be. And the only way you know how to get there is through the Bible. I can preach it to you, and you can believe me, but believe what the Word says. And get an understanding of the Word, because somebody can read a scripture to you and twist you all up. The Bible can say what they actually said, but their motive for reading that to you was not so that you were better yourself in Christ. It was some other motive attached to it. Some people use the Bible as a means to control people. Somebody, Some people use the Bible as a means to manipulate people. Be very careful who's teaching and preaching the Bible to you. Know something about the person that's ministering. Do they have a good reputation? Do they live a lifestyle? Do they practice what they preach? Okay? 
There's too many phony, baloney people out here on this planet that are worshiping God in vain. You understand? That's why many will say, Lord, haven't I prophesied in thy name? And then thy name have cast out devils. And then thy name have done many wonderful <coughs> works. Jesus is going to let them know the bad news. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They want to talk about prophesying, casting out devils. They want to talk about getting drunk. They don't want to talk about getting high and getting laid. They don't want to talk about that. No, we want to talk about the good stuff. Well, guess what? God sees your whole life. Okay? If you haven't repented of the sins that you've committed, you better get it right with God because once you die, that's it. Chances are up. Wherever the tree falls, that's where it'll lie. So if you die in your sins, you are eternally lost in your sin. If you die having your sins forgiven and washed under the blood of Jesus, you will eternally be saved. You understand? At that point, when you complete your race, you'll receive salvation. Now, you can walk by faith that what the Bible says is true and know that you're saved based on the fact that you're living for God and that the witness of God is on the inside of you. You understand? You can have blessed assurance here, but if you start disobeying God, you had better repent and you had better have the fear of God in you to lead you to repent because if you die in your sins, if you defile these white garments that God has given you when you come to the cross at Calvary and you accept the penalty that Jesus paid for you. If you take those white garments and get them dirty, guess what? They got to be cleaned again. You better repent and hope that you don't cross a line that God says, I won't forgive you because there is a line. There is a place where you can so frustrate the grace of God that you end up falling from grace. And the Bible spells it out and speaks it out. But you see these people teaching commandments of men, they're all over. Be careful who teaches you the Bible. Because there are people that have other motives other than you getting to heaven. You understand? You understand. It says, and he called the multitude. And said unto them, hear and understand. Verse 11, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, or make the man filthy and unclean, but that which cometh out of the mouth, that defileth a man. There's a whole lot the Bible has to say about the, the speech. You make yourself unclean by your speech when you are putting people down and cursing people and, and making them humiliating people and destroying their confidence and their self-esteem. The Bible says you make yourself unclean. And if you make yourself unclean, guess what? The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You will eat the fruits of whatever it is, your toxic tongue, the poison that your tongue has caused. If you don't repent before God, there will come the day, as James said, the tongue sets on fire the course of nature and is itself set on fire of hell. The par the, Well, it's not a parable. Forgive me. There's an account in Luke chapter 16 of the rich man. This man had everything you would ever want. He had money, wealth, possessions. All his bills were paid. You understand? He was living a good life. But there was this beggar named Lazarus that was poor and had nothing. And the rich man wouldn't even give him the crumbs that fell from the table at dinner time. And this man was so diseased and, and festered with sores that the dogs came and licked his sores. It's a very disgusting sight. But yet God loved this man. And the Bible says this man died. And he was escorted 
by angels into Abraham's bosom, which was the place called paradise. Now when people die because Jesus went to the cross and rose from the grave, you die and go straight to either heaven or hell. There's a place in heaven that is now moved into heaven where you will remain until the judgment seat of Christ. You understand? Where you receive your eternal rewards if you're right with him. And then there's the place called hell, which is the holding place. People are being tormented there, but it's going to get a lot worse because after the great white throne judgment, they're going, death and hell shall be cast into the lake of fire. So that's, that's going to be the worst of the worst. You understand? But anyway, while the beggar Lazarus was escorted into paradise, the rich man died and was buried and in hell the Bible says he lifted up his eyes being in torment and guess what he wanted he looked afar off see now since you go to heaven and hell people in hell cannot see paradise but back then because paradise was was under the earth it was a, a distance from hell but people in hell could see over into paradise they could see the people in paradise being comforted while the people in hell were being tormented. And the rich man saw Father Abraham. He said, Father Abraham, let Lazarus go and dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. That's how bad he was suffering. He was being tormented and could not get one drop of water and Abraham reminded him said remember in this life where you had all the good things and Lazarus had evil things now Lazarus is comforted and thou art tormented see they traded places you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. Lazarus was now living the good life in paradise and the rich man couldn't even get one drop of water let alone a glass he couldn't get one drop of water on his tongue. He was tormented, and he's still being tormented. Over 2,000 years later, the rich man is still in hell. You understand? This is not a parable. This is a truth. You're going to find out that if you worship God in vain, there's a worse punishment than somebody who never even embraced the gospel of Christ. Now we've seen what not to do. Let's see what we should be doing. Verse 12, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Yeah, people get mad when you preach the truth of the gospel. Like people get mad on me when I stand up for the truth of the gospel. It's on my wife's account. So people come back and try to call her name and attack her. But it's me and I let them know it's me and they still. You know, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the true gospel. The true gospel is the same God of grace and mercy is also the God of judgment and wrath as well. You have to teach it balanced. You can't overteach judgment and wrath, and you can't overteach grace and mercy. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter, and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye not understand that whatsoever in earth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. But these things, or those things which proceed out of the heart, out of the mouth, come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man or make him unclean and filthy. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast a Tyrian seed, and then behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, 
Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She's not even a Jew, and Jesus was sent unto the lost sheep of Israel. This woman is a Canaanite, but she besought Jesus and called him Lord, the son of David is what she called him. And she needed help because her daughter was possessed with a devil and being tormented. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cried after us, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There came she, then came she, and what did she do? She worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and they cast it to dogs. Now I just told you the parable of the rich man, mm -hmm. which wouldn't even give Lazarus the crumbs mm -hmm. that fell from his table. Watch what happens in verse 27. And she said, true Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Did you understand? And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She got delivered because of the worship of her mother, which wasn't even a Jew. Isn't God good? Those that worship him in spirit and in truth have a relationship with God even if they're not even totally aware of it. God honors worship. God healed this woman's daughter because she worshiped him. What can God do for you if you would get a hold of him and worship him and turn from your evil ways? What in the world could God do for your house? Wow. Powerful. Remember the story of the alabaster woman with the alabaster box mm -hmm. and Matthew chapter number 26. We read that in our most of that chapter in our reading today. But this woman, which was a sinner, took an alabaster box of very costly oil precious. or precious. It was very costly and very precious. Other accounts of the gospel like Luke or Mark tell you that it's very it was very costly and she poured it out on his head and anointed his head something the other people should have did and they didn't even do that because Jesus is our high priest you understand he should have been anointed and they didn't anoint his head with the oil but the woman that was a sinner came and did so and why else I mean what did she do she washed her his feet with her tears they were supposed to wash his feet and they didn't and then she wiped them and dried them with her hair her hair you understand we don't know how dirty Jesus feet was Jesus did a lot of walking I don't know what you picture Jesus as being, but he was just as human as you are, and he's also God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the second person in the Trinity. He was fully man and fully God. He took God and he took man and brunched them together. And Jesus' feet had to have been dirty because they were supposed to wash them. You don't wash clean feet. You wash dirty feet. You understand? She washed them with her tears. She was crying and mourning and <coughs> sorrowful and wiped them with her hair. Women don't usually take their hair and wipe people's feet with them. Okay? With it. It's not normal. But Jesus blessed her. Jesus said, your sins, which are many, are forgiven you. You understand? Mm -hmm. In Matthew, he said, 
as long as the gospel is preached, that which this woman have done will be witnessed as a memorial to her. That the story and the account of what she did is a memorial. God forgave her her sins on the spot. Did tell her go run and jump in the Jordan River and get baptized by John? No, he didn't. He just forgave her right on the spot. And she was clean. Doesn't matter how dirty she was on the ends. Jesus cleansed her with the power of the Holy Ghost. Just like he delivered the woman's daughter by the power of the Holy Ghost. That same power is available, but you got people perverting the gospel and making money instead of being serious about Jesus. When you're serious about Jesus, you got authority over the devil. You understand the devil is afraid of you because he knows you are a threat to his kingdom with God's power in you. Without God's power, you're no match for the devil. You understand? But what is power? The Bible says that God be for us, who can be against us? John said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you are a worshiper of God, King David knew how to worship God. Of course, he blew it later on and had to be rebuked. And there was a terrible punishment that came upon him and his, and his family. But David repented and his life was spared. You understand? And David ended up dying. But he died in right standing with God because he turned his heart back to the Lord, which gave him grace and mercy when he repented. Don't you go around sinning and thinking you can sin and get away with it without repenting. You don't want to die with unrepentant sin in your life. Okay? You repent and you confess your sins like 1 John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, or if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means he makes us clean. Not only forgives us, he makes us clean. We need to stay clean in Jesus' name. We need to worship him truly and not worship him in vain. The Pharisees knew all about the Old Testament laws, yet Jesus said, in vain did they worship him because they taught for commandments, for doctrines, the commandments of men. Think about denominationalism. Think about that. Think about the charismatic move. All this stuff started from man. You understand? They claim God started it, but no. What God started brought glory to God in Acts 2. That's when the power of the Holy Ghost fell upon the disciples. And at the day of Pentecost, people started a denomination based on what happened at a Jewish feast. Isn't that a shame? There's no such thing as a Pentecostal person. Okay? It's just no such thing. But man made a denomination. Jesus went Pentecostal. He went Baptist. He went Methodist. He is Lord. You understand? It's... If you can be in a church that teaches Jesus. If you surrender your life to Jesus, you'll go to heaven. It doesn't matter if you were in a Methodist church. You understand? Yeah. If your heart's right with God, you will go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But the doctrines that these churches teach are doctrines taught by men. And you need to understand that you are to be a Christian. No matter what church you're a part of. You're not going to hell because you was in the Baptist church or the Methodist church. You go to hell because you never surrendered your life to Jesus. Understand? So the name on the door is not what matters. But if there's a doctrine that's being taught wrong, God's going to show you. And when God shows you, you'd be willing to stand up even if they kick you out. Don't be afraid to end up in your home preaching the gospel like I am. Because I trust God and I know. That if I serve him and obey him, I will be in heaven and it will not matter. That's why we call this the Christian church. That means we're connected to every born again believer on this planet if you're born again. That is. Don't need to be anything else but the Christian church. Amen. 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 Worship God in spirit and in truth and watch God bless 
every area of your life and teach you how to live and teach you how to use money and teach you not to idolize money and not to idolize material things. They're just money in your hands on this planet. It's just a tool that you use on this planet. Don't you idolize or worship it and begin to pattern your whole life around finances. Amen? Amen. And watch God bless you. Trust God. He knows your situation and he will get you out. But if you keep trying to get yourself out on your own, you're going to keep messing it up and digging the hole even deeper. I was told that the first law of getting out of the hole is to stop digging. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for allowing me to preach your word. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for helping me to have a right mind to rightly divide the word of truth. And thank you, Lord, for those who heard the word. And I pray that someone's life will be changed by the power of the truth of your word. That someone will surrender their life to you so that they will not have to face the fate of the rich men in hell. I pray, Lord God, that people who have lived religiously and not quite given themselves totally to you will get off the fence and be hot for Jesus so that they will not be spewed out of your mouth, Lord. I ask God for your grace and mercy. Protect us. Give us traveling mercies. Be with us throughout our travels and encounters. Help us in each and every area of our lives until you call us home. Lord God, I pray for your spirit and your grace and your power to be upon me and my family and for those that are here and those that may hear this over the internet. I just pray for your grace and mercy on their lives and hopes that they will get it right with you and begin this wonderful relationship with you and see it through so that they can hear you say well done. Lord, I ask for your grace and your mercy and power. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go in his grace and praise the Lord. Hallelujah.